everybody, and then a uh, virtual hello to everybody that's watching us on YouTube. I'll just do a quick introduction. My name is Sanafik Gabru. I am YAP's Executive Director. For those of you who are not familiar with YAP, uh, it stands for Your Ethiopian Professionals. We're a 501c3 organization that really aims to be a platform for our community to network, um, tap into resources so that they can grow personally and professionally. We're very excited to have Another session with our Ayuda partners as part of our Know Your Rights series. This is a, a signature event that we do as part of our diaspora engagement program where we try to dissect complicated legal topics in a way that's digestible and actionable. So for our in-person events, we try to make sure that there are various linguistic resources. So um, if you're watching this virtually, um, check us out at our next in-person event. But we're very, very grateful for our UDA partners who make all of this possible. So I will hand it over to them. Um, today we have Beatrice Ortiz and Catherine Chen to go through victims' rights. So um, hope you all tune in and thank you for everybody that's attending in person today. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is, again, Beatrice Ortiz. I'm one of the staff attorneys at the DC Office of Ayuda. And, uh, for this Know Your Rights uh, presentation, I wanted to talk about victim of victims of crime and which forms of relief some victims of crime have under immigration law. So we're talking about T visas, U visas, and VAWA self-petition. I'm gonna explain what these three reliefs are. So, throughout the presentation. Again, I always say this, but I will say it again. Um, before applying to any immigration benefit, we recommend that you contact a licensed immigration attorney or a BIA accredited representative. This is for, these presentations are for you to know your rights. When, when you are filing something, you should have someone on your side that, that represents you. Every case is different. Um, so an attorney or um, an accredited representative has to analyze your case and really tell you what what is best for you, depending on the, on the facts of your case. So I did a quiz because I didn't last time and I was asked for it, so here it is. <laughs> so the preliminary questions that we have is, if I am a victim of crime, I should not report the crime to the authorities because I don't have any status in the United States. Is this true or false? False. Yes, it's false. Having a non-immigrant visa means that my status in the United States is only temporary. It depends, yeah. but yes. A, a, a non-immigrant visa means that your visa has an ending date to the visa. But I'm going to explain to you what you can do if you have a T or a U visa and how you can legally stay in the United States. If I am a victim of domestic violence married to a U.S. citizen, I cannot report abuse until I or she or he has a status on the, in the United States. Is this true or false? It's false, yes. So we're gonna start with the T visa. A T, uh, and a T is a visa for victims of severe trafficking. It could be trafficking of sexual or labor trafficking. How do you are eligible for a T? Where well, you have to be a victim of severe traffic, sexual or label, you have to be physically in the US or at any point of entry on account of trafficking. You have to comply with any reason, reasonable request for assistance in investigating and prosecuting the trafficking. And you have to prove that it would be extreme hardship for you to go back to your home country and you have to prove that you're admissible in the United States. There are some waivers and some things that, that it can be, make you eligible with a waiver. So when you, we say that you have to comply with any reasonable request for assistance in investigating or prosecuting the trafficking, 
in the t visa cases the ones that i worked with i have worked with in the past you mainly say to the prosecutor that you may have may have a t visa case or a trafficking case and they're going to decide if they're going to interview you and they're going to decide if they're going to pursue the case whether they do or don't doesn't have any any um like uh it doesn't matter for your t visa whether they they accuse or not accuse or whether they interview you or they don't interview you you have the ability to submit the t even if they don't do anything you just have to be available for the interview or have to be available if they decide to pursue the case um in terms of the extreme hardship uh, going back to your home country or upon removal in the cases that i have c for t's this is something that a person is going to do a statement and prove how hardship how how is going to be the hardship of going back after the trafficking has occurred because these are people for example in labor cases that have been uh, abused for a long amount of time and they don't have the resources in their home country to go back and have a dignified life. So what you have to prove as a T visa, uh, for a T visa is that your, the removal is gonna be hardship for you. And also, you have to be admissible to the United States, but there's waivers. Most of the waivers of the T and the U's are, are you are able to waive them with, uh, with a petition of the waiver in these two visas. What are the benefits? Well, you're gonna be a T visa recipient for four years or at least four years, you're gonna have an employment authorization when the visa is approved. You can include derivative family members and you can apply for a lawful permanent resident after three years of having the T or upon conclusion of the investigation of trafficking. There are some cases when you can get from the prosecutor a letter saying that the case is closed and they're not going to pursue or the case is over and it's finished and you can do the adjustment when immigration lawyers uh, talk about about an adjustment it's an adjustment to be a legal permanent resident of the united states so you can do the adjustment before the three years i actually have a case uh, like that right now and it's just a letter saying from the prosecutor that received the the complaint from the client saying that he that the investigation is over and that the client has been um, willing to to cooperate with him and in this case you have a lot of public benefits uh, the benefits include medical assistance food food stamps you can apply for TAMF with it which is uh, also part of the food stamps so as a t uh, recipient you received a lot of benefits public benefits and you can receive them and there's no problem with uh being um you don't you're not gonna have a problem with Yeah, you're going to have the term with public charge. T and U's don't have that problem. You don't have to prove to the United States that you're, you're not going to be a public charge here. So that's important. Um, I just today had, had a client that asked me that. When you're applying for a U or a T, you can apply for insurance, uh, state insurance. You can ask for food stamps. You can, you can have public... Uh, benefits and it doesn't matter with for your case so a you it's uh, a little more complicated uh, i forgot to tell you and i'm gonna go back because i, I don't want to forget um the t you don't have to wait you can do the adjustment 
uh, after the three years and the T doesn't have a cap. So as soon as you submit it, it takes like uh, from 17 to 34 months. But when it's approved, you don't have to wait for a visa to be available. That's very important because in case of use, we have uh, that, I, I don't want to say problem, but we have that mon mountain to, to climb with the client. Uh, a U, it's a visa that is for victims of, of crime in the United States on, or its territories. So you have to prove that you have been a victim of a statutory listed crime in violation of a U.S. law or its territories or possessions. There's a list of crimes and it has to be one of those crimes it cannot be any crime you have to be helpful with the criminal investigation or prosecution you have to have sub substantial physical uh, physical or mental abuse and you have to have a law enforcement certification of helpless help helplessness um this is one of the steps that the, the T doesn't have that the U does. Before you can submit a U visa, you have to have a certification from law enforcement. In reality, what this means is that your attorney is going to send a form. I have it here. It's a supplement B of an I-918. And we as attorneys send this directly to the law enforcement. It can be federal, state, or local. And we communicate directly to the person that you were helpful with. It can be a prosecutor, it can be a police person, it can be a judge sometimes that gave you uh, a, a, an order of protection. And uh, we, we as immigration attorneys send this to that person and try to explain to them because some of them, some of them do have someone that works with U visas, but some of them just don't. And you have to explain what a U visa is and you have to you know, try to fill some of the form. Remember that I told you that it was some crimes, so the list of crimes is in the certification. And uh, it has abduction, abuse, blackmail, domestic violence, extortion, and it, it's a list. So after the person in law enforcement received it, he or she decides whether or not she's going to sign the certification. And uh, that's one of the first that is the first step that you have to do it in a U visa and sometimes the case just stops there because it's discretionary. The law enforcer doesn't have to sign it. We do our best for, for our clients and try to submit again when our law enforcer says that she's, she or she is not going to sign. But um, this is the first thing that you have to do in the EU. After you have the certification signed, um, you have six months to submit the EU. After the person that signs it has to put has to put the date. So the six so USCIS knows that uh, which is the date when the certification was signed. And then you prepare the package and you have to submit a statement and you, if the person, uh, for example, went to the hospital and spent in the hospital two weeks and then went to therapy, well, you have to do a statement and you have to submit everything from the hospital and you have to um, include the certification and you also can include the family. Uh, if there's a spouse, it can be a derivative. Is if there are children, there can be derivatives also. If there are children outside the United States, you can include them in, in the U. Um, and in the case of the U, they don't have to when the U is approved because it takes so long, they don't have to be under twenty one. This is one of the good things about the U. Um, when the U is approved, which is right now nine years after it's submitted, 
um, you get uh, okay, uh, I forgot about this, so I'm sorry. Um, this is mainly a definition of a victim. You can be a direct victim and you can be also an indirect victim. You can be far, you can be uh, a spouse or children or a parent or, but you have to prove if you are indirect that you were a victim also and that you had to go to therapy and you suffered and, and those things. And then, yeah, it takes, there's a limit of 10,000 new visas and the wait is very long, but there's no interview. It's, a, it's for me, it's a good relief. The only bad thing about the U is it takes too much time. So you get the U for four years also, you get an employment authorization, you can include your, your family, and after you being uh, with the U, being in the United States for three years, you can do the adjustment. For children, uh, if they are outside the United States, they have to do a consular processing for a U visa. It's different from the consular processing in other cases because it's for a non-immigrant. It's less complicated, but right now it's taking a long time because embassies are not open in all uh, in around the world. There are some embassies that are working, there are some that are not. But uh, it's a fairly simple process and you can have your children here and they uh, don't have to cooperate with any authorities because they are derivatives. So if your children just have to stay here in the United States for three years and they can do the adjustment. Also, uh, there's almost Almost all inadmissibility grounds in the EU are uh, covered by the waiver. Obviously, terrorism and uh, some some frauds that are against the government of the United States. But but if you entered without inspection, if you were deported, if you entered again, that can be waived with the EU. Um, so uh, there are some criminal uh, activities that you cannot commit, but uh, you cannot be a criminal, obviously, to have a U, but all the, the inadmissibility, normal inadmissibility problems that clients have in the U on the T, they are wa you, you can file a waiver for those, so that's good. In some states, after you get the EU visa, you can get public benefits. Not, not as much as a T, but you can get them. I'm sorry. And last but not least, there's the BAWA. Um, this is a form of relief for victims of domestic, domestic violence for spouses, parents, and children of US citizens or legal permanent residents. This means that if you are abused by, by your US uh, citizen husband or your legal permanent resident husband or your children are abused by a US citizen or a legal permanent resident or the children that are US citizens or legal permanent residents abuse their parents or um, children abuse their parents, so ch child to parent and parent to child. The child that is, is an abuser has to be uh, 21 or older. And um, you have to be on a child under 21 unless you are between 21 and under 25 and were eligible for the self-petition before your uh, 21 birthday but did not or could not apply because of the abuse. So that's an exception, uh, but that's why I always say you have to go to an attorney and see and have the immigration attorney analyze your case And uh, your eligibility in a VAWA, it's uh, 
the sales petitioner must show that it had a family relationship with the spouse or the or the sibling or the daughter or the parent. It was a good faith marriage. This is important. You have to prove that your marriage was was a good faith marriage, and you enter because you were in love with your with your husband, and you live with your husband for some time. Um, you have to prove that the the abuse is extreme. You have to. Prove the status of the abuser, or, so, or that means you have to prove that he was a legal permanent resident or a U.S. citizen, and you have to prove your your good moral ca character and residence with the abuser. We have had cases that the residence was two weeks, but uh, you you can you have to prove that you at some point live with the abuser. The benefits is that you can file with the without the abuser knowing that you're filing. Um, it sits, if it's apparently approvable, they give you uh, government aid, which means that they defer. They they say this is a bona fide petition, and they give you government uh, uh, public service. Uh, your children can be included. You have a work authorization, and uh, if the self uh, petition if is approved, uh, you have a work authorization if the self petition is approved. Then you can, when the I-360, which is the form, it's approved, you can do the adjustment. There are some cases then you that you can file the I-360 with the adjustment because if you are a, um, a wife or a husband of a U.S. citizen, that makes you an immediate relative, and you don't have to wait. You don't have wait time, so you can file both forms at the same time. If you are married to a legal permanent resident, you may have to wait. Right now, that category is concurrent, so it's you can fi you you have to file it separately, but you can file it one after the other. It's not a one step, but it's uh, uh, it's faster. But you have to see the visa bulletin before you file it, and um, you have legal permanent status for your children, and you can receive in some states. Uh, benefits. One of the uh, questions that I did before it was well, if you have a non immigrant visa, that visa is temporary, and I said maybe. The T and the U are visas that are for four years, but if you have the T for th three years or you have the prosecutor say that the case is closed, you can do the adjustment to being a legal permanent resident. So yes, a non-immigrant visa, it's a visa that has an ending date. And you're going to have your ending date when you have your T or your U approved. You're going to know that date. Normally they are approved for four years, sometimes three. If your visa for some reason is not approved for th four years and you need, for example, one more year to comply with the three years living in the United States, you can file an extension of that visa and comply with the three years and then file the adjustment. This, uh, all these uh, reliefs, you cannot uh, go out the United States while the, you have a T or a U. In most cases, you can apply for a parole, but in most cases, it's not recommended for you to go outside the United States. When, but when you file the adjustment, one of the things that we file with the package is an advance for parole for the person, if the person needs to um, go outside the United States while the adjustment is spending. So for our clients, um, it's very important because they have been here for a long time, and they haven't seen their families for a long time. So when the adjustment is filed, 
they have the opportunity to go back to their home country and see their family for the first time in a long time. So that's something that it's it gives me hope when when I when I have a parole uh, approved. Do you have any questions? Yes. With the the U visa, you are eligible if the crime happens in the U.S., right? Yes. But for T and VAWA, you would have, I guess came here illegally or had illegal residence, right? And then you're able to apply. Um, with the T, maybe the trafficker brought you to the United States uh, lying to you and uh, you came maybe with a visa, but the visa expired. Um, some t labor uh, T's are for people that take care of families, maybe babysitters or something, and it's also, they bring them with a tourist visa and then, then the abuse starts when they get here. The VAWA, it has to be in the United States, but it can, yeah, it has to be in the United States because you can also use the VAWA. This is why it's, self, it's a self-petition, because you can also use the VAWA uh, under that law. You can, um, for example, there are some, when you get uh, to be an LPR with restrictions, with me, which means that you have been married less than two years, and they give you uh, the green card for two years, and then you have to, submit another form with your spouse proving that it's a good faith marriage. When your abuser is a USC or an LPR and you have to go out of the marriage because of the abuse before those two years, you can also use the VAWA in that form, which is the I-751, and you can do it by yourself. And also, the VAWA has another element when you are in proceedings, you can use, you can, it's sort of a cancellation of removal, but under VAWA. So VAWA has a lot of reliefs under the law, and it's, it's for uh, domestic violence and abuse for, from an LPR or a US citizen to a person that doesn't have a status or that needs to submit the I-751, which is that the person has a, a green card, but only for, for two years. And in those cases, they can file by themselves, but they have to prove the abuse, obviously. In paper, without the top visas and the nine years, it's, it's a good relief. So, yes. Can you say uh, based on what I heard? Can you hear me? Uh, if you if you can come. <laughs> uh, based on what I heard, uh, mm -hmm. there seems to be more focus on what is of trafficking, uh, human trafficking kind of. Yes. And the other is of domestic uh, abuse. So mm -hmm. Family you said about that. Human yes. trafficking abuse. Mm -hmm. So, outside of those, uh, so many countries are the target groups that this law seems to, to be addressing, right? Yeah, well, the U, it's very, it, 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 the crimes are a list of crimes that almost cover. Well, like abduction, like I can I can read them to you. It's right. abduction, abuse, sexual contact, attempt to commit any of named crimes, being held hostage, blackmail, conspiracy, domestic violence, extortion, false imprisonment, felonious assault, female genital mutilation, fraud, foreign labor contracting, incest, involuntary servitude, kidnapping, manslaughter, murder, obstruction of justice peonage, perjury, prostitution, rape, sexual assault, sexual exploitation, slave trade, 
solicitation to commit any of the named crimes, stalking, torture, trafficking, unlawful criminal restraint, and witness tampering. So the list is long. So let me just speak on FGM. Excuse me? FGM. Did you say FGM? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, how, how is that? Is it, is it, should it be here or should it be Yes, the crime should be committed in the United States. If somebody is but if somebody suffers that in their home country, they can file for asylum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but this is an intention if somebody tries to commit FGM and then the person who is victim of that can apply. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, no, in the you know, it can be. So an immigrant can commit a crime. Yeah, an immigrant can commit a crime and the, and the victim can, can have a you, yes. Yeah. And the, the, the domestic violence case also has to be here in the United States. In the case of a you, yes. Again, if the domestic violence uh, occurs in a home country and the person calls the police and the police doesn't protect them, that's a basis for asylum. So that's, that's a different relief. How would they prove that? Well, um, oftentimes these are things that are back in their countries. They don't have. So, I am a big believer on the testimony of the person that is asking for asylum because sometimes documents don't exist. Yeah. So the statement of the person is very important, but also a statement of the person that lives with the person in the country, it's also, you can use that. Um, I Asylum, it's, it's a relief that it's, I would wish that it would be simpler to prove. It's the, the burden of proving the person, it's, it's big, it's because the person has to prove the asylum. But um, again, I'm a big believer on the statement, and I'm a big believer of believing in people that are saying that they have suffered persecution in their home country, and they are going to suffer persecution in the future if they go back. Yes. Question because I was very surprised when I heard, um, you know, if you go to a police officer, like they're not going to deport you. And I think sometimes there's the assumption that any form of law not any form of, of enforcement is there to deport you. That's why I say a policeman is not in the in the business of deporting people that are victims in the United States. Okay, so there should never be a concern of, you know, going to a if you are the victim, no. Yeah. If you are if you are committing the crime, oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> if you obviously if because I, I think I said this in uh, in the other presentations, most of my clients get detained because they are uh, driving without a license, and they get stopped by the police, and the police detain them, and then they refer them to immigration. But this really doesn't happen when you're the victim. When you're the victim, for example, of domestic violence, the police are there to protect you. They help you to submit the protective order and they refer you to the prosecutor. So in the, in the, when the facts are that you are the victim, you need to go to the police. Because again, you don't know. In, it, one of the of the crimes is domestic violence, and most of my cases of use are domestic violence, um, which is like uh, it's it's easy to understand that you are if you are a victim of domestic of domestic violence, you should go to the police because that's one of the crimes under the U. But again. Uh, you don't. You are not going to know all the crimes that are there. So if you're a victim of a crime, just go to the police. I had a, a case when I first started immigration, and I was able to submit a U for a felonious assault for an assault of, you know, that a guy was just walking and a group 
uh, attacked him. So I was able to prove that was a felonious assault. So you don't know. At the end of the day, you don't know. So if you're the victim, you have you 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 should report. Do you want to talk about the clinics? Sure. So now Catherine's going to talk about the clinics. These clinics are important and good for uh, the people because you get a consult with an attorney and they uh, hear your facts, you get an intake and you take them your documents so you know if you have a relief and they refer you to, to maybe private attorneys or other organizations that can help you. But they do a screening and that's good for clients so they know if they ever have a relief or they don't. So. Thank you. Um, so there are two flyers up front. Um, these are the two. So I'm going to talk about this one first. It says brief immigration advice and referrals, and this is the cl clinic that um, Bay just talked about. Um, these are our brief advice and referral clinics, um, and they're all remote, so over the phone or um, they're, they're over the phone, and how it works is that on one Friday, and our next one is September 30th, so not this Friday, but the next one on September 30th, um, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., you call our intake line, which is 202-787-5311, and um, we really recommend that you call at 10 a.m. Again, it is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but once the slots are full, we close the line and they get full pretty quickly. So you call in on September 30th, and then we give you a time slot, the, usually the following Friday, so that would be October 7th um, in this case. And um, then uh, on that day, on that time slot, we give you, uh, an attorney will call you, get your information, and then give you advice on your case. And so um, this unfortunately doesn't lead directly to a full representation lawyer who will take on your case, but it will give you advice and tell you what your current situation is, what options, do you have any of these options to change your status and what the next steps would be and what is a referral um, to an attorney. So again, that is the time to call would be September 30th at 10 a.m. And then um, this other flyer here is for our pro yeah, UDA's Project End, which is our program that um, services uh, victims of immigration legal services fraud. So if you or someone you know spoke to somebody who gave you advice or um, had you pay for a service and they um, either were, if they were not an attorney or even if they were but they gave you bad advice or did something wrong, um, this project uh, talks to you and helps you see what options you might have to both maybe file a complaint against this person and also potentially fix your immigration case. And so um, at the bottom of this flyer, uh, we have the contact information for that and that is um, scheduling consults essentially kind of any time. It's not the same as the clinics, which is a set time. Um, and our clinics in general, if this you know, next week doesn't work for you, um, we, they happen once a month and you can go to IUDA's website um, to see what our updated, uh, when our clinic is for that month. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, what's the phone number that they can call? Oh, um, the clinic phone number is 202-787-5311. And again, that's on September 30th. Um, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but close as close to 10 a.m. as possible. So if there's not any other questions, uh, yes. Sorry, before you finish, uh, uh, on the abduction, sorry, if you are It's fine, it, it's fine. Uh, if a uh, parent takes his or her Mm -hmm. what, what does, how does it apply? Usually abduction is out there, I understand they get it. But they pick them outside or can it be also be within the United States? How does it apply? Well, in that case, the victim, it's, it can be the, in abduction, 
abduction of a child, the victim would be the child yeah. and the mother or the father that didn't abduct. It is an indirect victim of the crime. So you would have to go to the police and then uh, in the UKs, because obviously that's abuse on the power, but in the UKs, uh, you would have to go to the police and see if there's a court case and uh, ask for the certification. But in that case, you would, if I would look at the child and the mother or the father that didn't that that didn't do the ob abduction. So like in the scenario that I am just uh, okay. thinking out loud, like a father say abducts the child, mm -hmm. the mother does not have a resident status. So can she be? Can she say she's a victim of that? Of and course. Because of yes. The child. You have to prove that, that there's uh, physical and mental um, damage to the person. So you, have to, you would have to prove that also when you submit the you, but yes. That's why I always say that um, there has to be an analysis from an attorney that does immigration law because that's not a case that I ever heard in my life, obviously, but... Um, from the facts that you are giving me, I would sit down with the person and see if there's a possible you. Thank you. Of course. So again, I, I, will, I thank you so much for the opportunity. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and anything that you need from us, from Ajuda, um, uh, I know that I speak for myself, but I know that <laughs> Uh, from our group, um, anything that you need, we're here, so.